Good day all, and welcome back to the Yabai Vember event that I'm doing. Yep. Today we're going to talk about Battle Royale. Battle Royale is probably the first of the... Well, it gives itself its own name really. The genre of Battle Royale has gone into gaming, has gone into other mangas such as Mario Nikki, such as Rooftop Parade, such as... Masses and masses of them. Battle Royale is also present in lots and lots of first person shooters and third person shooters, especially in the online market. Okay, going from that, the author is Tak Ami Koshin and the artist is Taguchi Mayushi. The year is 2000 and this was published in Akita Shoten's Young Champion magazine. It was serialized by Tokyo Pop in 2003 and then again in 2007. There are 15 volumes but in 2007 they packed it into five volumes hence the two releases. Okay okay so what can I say about Battle Royale? Well this is quite an old manga it's 21 22 years old plus the book was released in the mid 90s so you're looking at a book about 27 28 years old there's also a movie there's also spin-offs there's masses and masses of content to do with battle royale but we're just going to concentrate on the manga that was released in the year 2000 so if you can probably know by the battle royale theme you can probably guess what it's about but this manga is yep. and if you're not a fan of gore this is going to be the quick version of it Students enter a mission that's controlled by a despotic government and are forced to kill each other until one remains. A la, well, Hunger Games. But Hunger Games is the baby version of Battle Royale and should never really be confused with this. This is the original. Hunger Games is a very pale sequel or imitation. Saying all that, the manga has a lot more development of the characters. It is noted in the notes from the author that he wanted to go back into the past of the characters more in the manga than he did in the book. But also, doing that, some people have said that it takes away from the book. Now I've never read the book, so I can't say that. And thus I won't be commenting in if it takes anything away from the back book. Comparing this to other gory mangas, if you look at something like Pumpkin Knight, if you look at something like uh, U12, if you look at something like um, Him and Sempia, the gore factor is kind of muted compared to those, but there is a lot of gore. Anyway, that is going to be the end of the non-horrible part of the review. So, if you want a quick recommendation, kinda, if you've never read it before, sure. And you like this genre of Battle Royale, go for it. If you don't, then don't. So going from now, I'm going to break down a lot of the violence and some of the characters. When you look at Battle Royale, the first two opening chapters are quite shocking. For the point that you think that the person that you're introduced to is going to be the main character. He's not. He is killed very brutally and very quickly in the second chapter. This is a story about a despotic government that forces a group of teenagers, 15, 16, 17 year olds, into a horrible, horrible event of killing each other. There is no fun, there is no joy, there is no happiness to be found here. And what limited happiness they have, these students, are quickly and horrifically taken away. You can't say that any of the characters are boring, except Maybe the evil, the horrible sensei character that's drawn as if he's some sort of ugly, well, protagonist of a hentai, basically. Going from that, the graphics are very reminiscent of Jojo. They're very reminiscent of Western style. However, if you look at the reactions on the faces, the heavy eyebrows, it is manga in that sense. It is just heavily influenced by that Western style of comic and art. So, I want to talk a little bit about a couple of characters. And a couple of characters that I want to talk about are 
the first character that I want to talk about is the previous winner of the previous game, Shogo Kawada. Shogo Kawada has this really engaging backstory and he is one of the most sympathetic characters throughout the whole manga. There's 119 chapters and when you get glimpses into this guy's past, it's really eye-opening, it's really shocking and while it can be portrayed as, well, his past is like <laughs> Saying all that, none of the characters are boring. A few of them are really standouts. Kazu Kiriyama, he's a psychopath of extreme degrees. He's efficient and ruthless with his killing. He's a machine. But there are reasons for why he's like this. His past, when it's revealed, it's really sad that he's become like this. I'm sad now. Mitsuko Suma, this pretty girl, this like femme fatale character who uses her physicality as a weapon, is equally as sad. These are the two maniacs of the, the manga, one using their wiles and their beauty, and the other one using strict cunning and almost vicious savagery. And it's efficient, it's machine-like, it's if this person is a Terminator. I'll be back. But he's not. He's a boy. He's a broken boy, but he's still a boy. And when it comes to the end, he's shown that he's not invulnerable. Shuya... Nanahara, he's the main character that we follow through most of the manga. Him with Nariko Nakagawa, they're very interesting characters. He's a rocker, she's sort of like a good girl whose mother runs a bar. But this is certainly taking interesting people such as Shuya, his childhood is a bit rough, growing up in an orphanage with his friends, Nariko Nakagawa is the child of a businessman who just paid his mother off but occasionally she sees him in the bar that her mother owns it's sad and it's also kind of cool in the way that when Shuya and Nariko um, end up winning they basically win with Shogo by cheating the system I won't go into a lot of how this happens because that's the story in itself and you are going to get some chapters where five or six people die you're going to get chapters where no one dies and it's just character building or just people talking and there are action points for example there was one scene that i remember that's these two girls that are in like a hilltop thing and they're shouting over a line speaker saying join us don't do this horrible thing to each other and they are just brutally murdered they're brutally horrifically killed and Shuya is broken about this, he's really cut up about it, but Shogo's like, you can't save them, they've announced where they are, they're dead, don't even try, and when he does build himself, when Shuya Nanahara builds himself up to try, all that he hears is gunshots, and he's, the opportunity's gone, but then again, if he'd have tried, would Kazuyo have killed him? Maybe. The last character that I want to talk about, he is the main character that you're supposed to follow, he is the one that dies in two chapters. He's a brave lad. And while we do get some chapters with his past, a couple of, you know, throughout the manga, throughout these 119 chapters, you see why he is a hero and why he deserved to win. Now, that doesn't say anything about Shugo's win. It doesn't say anything about Shuya cheating the system with Nariko. It doesn't make any of their win less for him dying, for all this poor lad dying, but in a way I feel that his victory was stolen and for that reason it it stays with me a lot more than for example Pumpkin Nightlight, she's just a maniac that kills people out of a sense of, sense of revenge or if they get in a way, she is merciless or it's not like Dead Tube where M May is a Yandri but with a mission. She does this dead tube thing in order to impress the boy with the camera. She does it because she's a psychopath, but she's also smart with her psychopathy. She knows that outside of the dead tube she would be quickly and finally found and she would be stopped. 
the death game, or whatever you want to call it, this battle royale is horrific. And could it happen? I don't think so. It's not like that people are going to sign up for this. And if there is a, an oppressive government that institutes this horrific thing, I think that with modern technology we would know about it now. Or at least I hope we would. But saying that, this manga is also leaves you with a message of hope, the two final characters who do finally escape Nuri, Shuya Nanaharo and Nariko. It is a sort of uplifting at the end. There is the sort of like, well, I hope they had a nice life in America. But we don't really know if they did or not. So I guess that's up for you, our, the author, to come out for and say if they did. Saying all that, would I recommend it now that I've spoiled it? Again, the answer is maybe. It's not something that I could honestly say, if you're not a fan of gore, and you really don't like gore, uh, would you still read it? No, 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 I, I would stay away from it if you're really offended by gore. Um, maybe the book would be better, because I hear it's a, less, a lot less gory and a lot less um, descriptive in that. Or maybe the film, I've he also heard that's a lot less gory and descriptive than the uh, manga. Um, but... Yeah, this one is one that's going to stay with me, I think, for a while. It's Yabai in a different sense. It's not Yabai in a shock factor. It's Yabai in a, an emotional factor. And um, uh, I am glad I read it, but it's probably not something I would ever read again. Thank you all for your time. Do take care of yourselves. This one's a little less light-hearted than my other Yabai videos, but the content required it to be a little more straight, I think. Um, but I have used some reactions. To display my dismay in certain things. <laughs> because if I didn't, I think I would break. Thank you all for your time. Do take care of yourselves. And bye-bye.